already. Oh, I'm sorry. I, we, are, oh, yeah, we we're going. Oh, yeah, okay. hi, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I, I, was, I would start, but we have a very special oh. beginning for you. Oh, goodness. Uh, doing this live. Wow. Mm -hmm. Glass of wine. <clears throat> Centuries ago, the Malian emperor Mansa Musa sent his best and brightest scholars, explorers, warriors, and artisans across the great Western Ocean to discover new lands. They succeeded in ways no one could have imagined. Now, 3,000 years later, their descendants live and thrive on the planet of Batoa, with plenty to learn and explore on their new home, and the Hapalox and the landed threatening Batoa from afar. The calls of adventure and discovery are stronger than ever. Join creative director Tanya DePass as Invicta, the High and Old Blade Keeper. There's new names on this. Yeah. Did you? Okay. No, just, yeah, just read those. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mandy P. as Mirren, the Batantu Packmaster. Omega Jones as Daji, the Misajai Griot. And, oh, Brian Gray <laughs> as Essen, the Rakin Sakuo. And Eugenio Vargas as the storyteller as they explore new planets, make new friends, and treat everyone they meet luxuriously. We'll see. Welcome to the Motherlands. Woo! Welcome, everybody. What's up? Welcome to Into the Motherlands Live. Thank you so much for being here. We got a whole new crew, as you can see. Uh, and we're going to tell a little side story for Into the Motherlands. Thank you all so much for joining us. Um, we had that delightful introduction. Uh, so as we meet these characters, we'll get uh, the players to introduce them a little more uh, flavorfully and descriptively. Uh, but that is our crew. Why don't we just real quick, let's go ahead and just go straight down. Let everybody know uh, who you are and your character's name one more time, uh, since these are all new names uh, so that I can practice them. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Mandy P, and I'm playing Mirren, the Batantu Packmaster. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tanya Cypher Tier, and uh, if you watch the show, then you should know my character, Invicta, the Hyenol Blade Bladekeeper. I am Brian, and I am playing Essen, the Rakeen Sakura. Uh, and I'm Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard, and I am playing Dodgy. The oh, God, Misa Jai Green. There it is, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, if you are not familiar with Into the Motherlands, we are a sci-fi setting game. Uh, the idea being, as Brian said in the introduction, that uh, a group of humans were taken to this other planet many thousands of years ago, and now here they exist uh, with, well, other folks. Today, we are celebrating Foundation Day. This is the day that is celebrated every single year on the day marking the anniversary of the founding of an organization called Torch. Torch is sort of like the sci-fi UN. They are an organization that is dedicated uh, to supporting research and trade and the upliftment of uh, all peoples within their signatories. And that includes everyone here on the planet of Vatoa. During Founders Day, there are, it's, it's called Founders Day, but it's really several days of celebration that include music and food, dancing, performances, historical reenactments of the day. Of, it's not a very exciting reenactment. They signed some papers, but they reenact it anyway. Uh, and that is what we find uh, the five of you and lots and lots of other Vatoans doing as we zoom in on a little island in the center of which is Torch HQ, an enormously tall alabaster tower that has all kinds of windows towards the top. Uh, and all on the grounds are, are beautiful gardens that have been uh, cultivated for this specific day. Uh, there are lots of Salansi, who are a, a plant person hybrid uh, people, who have granted their talents uh, here on Torch Island for the day. Now, you're all there individually celebrating this day in whatever way you think is most appropriate for your character. So since we know Invicta a little bit better than the rest, I'm curious, how is Invicta spending her foundation day? In her home with her, uh, <laughs> so let's, look, she has to talk to people all day. I'm sure yep. many of us can relate. Um, but she's kind of hanging out, cooking things for herself and her Salansi partner and enjoying um, a bit of that homegrown herbalism that she's taken up during yeah. her break from oh, porch. Good. Um, and she's like, for once, not in armor, not in her uniform. She's just kind of very casually cooking, being very domestic, a side of Invicta that very few people have gotten to see. Yeah. 
Well, and as you just having a relaxing day, and there is a knock on the door. <laughs> and I just look over at, at my veggie boo, which mm -hmm. sounds real no, bad. Now that no. I said that, <laughs> at, at my partner, I'm like, can you get the door? Uh, yeah, and uh, he goes over and, and opens the door. Um, Invicta? What? Your friends are here. And <laughs> bustling into your home are uh, your captain, Sila919, uh, and, and the rest of your crew. And they, before you can object, they grab you, uh, and they grab Denis, and they drag you out to Torch Island for the festivities, refusing to allow you to have but, a date but piece. Food. Nope, no, yeah, food, food was there. on. It their fire. Have already shows you a plate of different cheeses, and then remembers the mistake uh, and puts them away because we know Invicta doesn't have cheese. I, I don't want to burn down my house. Can can you turn off the the fire? Uh, of course, obviously, Eli uh, goes in and takes care of that because Eli takes care of things. I, 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 but it was gonna be. It's gonna be great. And they no. take you on over. <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> and that is, I mean, it's still like a 15, 20 minute ride over to the island. And it, I, nope, no, the whole time. I love that. Uh, all right, uh, Essen. There is uh, here on Torch Island. Like I said, there are beautiful gardens. There are performances. There's food. There's reenactments. There's historical displays. What? Uh, what's what's Essen's poison today? Uh, Essen has come to Torch Island and is mostly fascinated by how tall <laughs> Torch headquarters is. It's tall structures are a thing of the Rakhine, but it's amazing that this would be here and, and not on our moon, so. And not getting struck by lightning all the time. Oh, they don't have that here. Well. Ah, okay. And yeah, so looking around and just kind of enjoying the, the revelry of everyone around, enjoying the good time and the, and the good vibes, but. Yes, just kind of looking up at everything, and Essen is very tall, so then looking down at people enjoying things and looking up again, it's... it's... Yeah, whenever you look up, there is something in the sky that sort of everyone is aware of, but they're avoiding looking at too often. But we'll talk about what that is in a minute. Uh, Mirren, what is Mirren up to for Foundation Day? Mirren is exploring all of the festivities, wanting to see some of the historical displays mm. and just the fun. As a Batandu, Mirren is usually underground. Yeah. Uh, and doesn't come to the surface very often. So is just dazzled by seeing everything that's happening across the festivities. There's so much that is different on the surface. Yeah, by, by most surface dwellers' standards, the historical exhibits in particular are dry. Uh, what does Mirren think of them, though? Still a little dry. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> just, just a little, yep. but like an interesting to see that perspective versus yeah. having spent so long uh, in the depth of the Toa and saying like, oh, this is what you think of what happened. Yeah. Does Mirren look, this is a strange question, but for someone who largely lives underground, does Mirren look up very much? Probably not in the same way mm -hmm. that others do. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, the sky, this is so interesting. Is it always this color? <laughs> yeah, you've heard of the recent events involving creatures called hapaloks, strange sort of cephalopod-like creatures that apparently lived in the depths of the oceans but have since taken uh, space flight and have set up in orbit around Vitoa and it's apparently some kind of threat. And you see ships in the sky and maybe that's what they're about, but everyone's being very strange about it and refusing to look up and refusing to sort of acknowledge them. If you asked anybody about them, they would sort of say, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Daji, how about you? What's your Founders Day activity of choice to begin? Um, well, Daji is um, he's not elderly. <laughs> but... He's definitely older in mind than body, but still has some age to him. Um, he's currently actually, I think, um, overseeing or guiding the current group of performers ah. right now. Uh, what kind of performance? Uh, it's like a drum corps. Yeah, totally. Um, 
making sure that their um, instruments are up to par. Uh, you know, one got stage fright, so he's kind of just wusang with them, for lack of a better word. Uh, <laughs> but he, he enjoys uh, the festivities, um, but he also has more of a job to do right now. I love that. I love that. You know what I forgot to ask you all to do after explicitly saying I was going to do it is have you describe your characters for us. So let's go in the same order. Uh, and Invicta, what, what, tell us about Invicta and what she looks like as we see her being dragged to the celebration. Poor Invicta. She <laughs> was like in her, in her comfy clothes. She had her toe beans out. She was love chilling. She's uh, but so Invicta, mad. <laughs> she is so, her fur is standing on end. She's real mad. <laughs> um, but Invicta, normally if she is on duty, has either her torture uniform on or some kind of uh, combat gear. She is a tall, high-ended creature, um, red fur that is braided down the middle of her uh, back or her head and her back. Uh, you know, kind of brown hyena-ish ears, brown and white patches on her snout. And uh, right now she is pouting <laughs> in the back of whatever transport she's been drag to. Absolutely. And, and your friends are very excited uh, to drop you off at Torch Island. Uh, Essen. Uh, Essen is a very tall, like 6'2", 6'3", uh, Rakeen, dark-skinned, wearing dark blue clothes, and every now and then there's sort of a shimmer to the fabric. Uh, dreadlocks done up very, very high, and there is sort of a metallic comb put in them um, Ooh, to kind of nice. keep them in place. And um, around his wait, left, right, left eye, there is um, what is essentially a birthmark, but it's sort of like a crescent moon that is slightly that is slightly glowing. Um, if you look at it, cool. Mirin. So Mirin is very pale and muted. hasn't gotten a lot of vitamin D. Usually spends time underground, uh, and pretty average in every meaningful way. <laughs> <laughs> like. Not very standout, uh, but does walk around in an interestingly scrounged outfit, uh, pulling pieces, bits of metal and leather from Enviro suits. So it probably stands out a little bit on George mm, Island. Sure. Uh, and it also, uh, in a probably slightly concerning fashion, uh -oh. has a companion because. Oh, yes. Mirren is a pack master. Yes, do tell. And uh, her companion is a Volca. <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about the Volca? And I'll, I'll fill in some gaps, too. Yes. But, uh, yeah. So the Volca is a reptilian creature that has a very high internal temperature and has mm -hmm. a tendency to glow a bit. Uh, I believe the description you once used was to compare it to an Ankylosaurus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, not quite that big. Not but, quite that big. But, but yes. But, Smaller, uh, named Brescia, who is uh, probably concerning to everyone they pass as they're wandering through the festivities. Yeah, woe betide any of the festival goers who brush up uh, against your Volca friend. Uh, they'll get a little bit of a surprise burn. Uh, the, the Volca's uh, scales on their back sort of glow from the hot internal temperature. And so far, uh, remind me their name? Brushia. Brushia. So far, Brushia has not exhibited this particular behavior, uh, but they are known to, when their internal temperature gets a little too hot, they expel uh, superheated rocks from their gizzard. Uh, so hopefully uh, that will only happen at appropriate times. I'm sure that's going to be the case, well, right? We, we have we got it covered if it does. Yeah, okay. It's fine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's fine. all right. Uh, and Daji? Uh, yeah, Daji um, is a little on the spawnier side of things wear simple um, greens and then brown uh, robes of some sort. Um, they have wiry um, gray uh, hair, almost like in a short afro, but definitely a little more kind of haphazard. Um, they have these purple eyes uh, that seem to not necessarily glow, but they definitely have a presence to them. Um, that hair is matched in the eyebrows that they have in the small, um, but still scraggly beard. Uh, that sits upon uh, their chin. Uh, in their hands, typically, is a walking stick. Um, and it's kind of curved, but it does the job. And they have this little small set of, of like miniature drums um, kind of hanging off their side. And it kind of just jingles everywhere and definitely hear the beating of that way too often as they walk. It actually kind of hobble, um, kind of are always hunched over ever so slightly. 
Uh, I realize they're like kind of a more uh, put together version of Boomy from Avatar. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Understood immediately. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love it. All right. Um, Invicta, you get sort of unceremoniously expelled onto, uh, onto Torch Island, and your friends immediately are like, we're gonna go get cheese, see you later, and take off. Uh, leaving excuse you, me. Yeah, leaving you on your own in the middle of this festival. Can I just get a transport back home? Uh, oh, you know, they're all hired right now. <laughs> <laughs> you really stranded me in space with no Uber? You're not in space, you're on an island. That's in worse. Space. Rates are really high right now, so they're gonna, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a surge price. Yeah. Rates are really yeah. high right now. Yeah. Please wait to book your ride. Uber is very expensive. <laughs> space Uber, never uh, mind. Torch no, pays no, as well. No, no, no. Torch does pay you again. not that well. Uh, <laughs> these surges. Um, so, uh, poor Invicta is left on her own, and you all are at different, different areas of the island, enjoying your day, when a siren begins to go off from somewhere in Torch HQ. And the majority of the festival goers do not react well to this. Uh, many of you have probably heard similar sirens to this before. They've been not infrequent since the Hapalox arrived, and they've been even more frequent since another group of aliens from outside of Torch's sphere of influence arrived here on Vatoa. There's another mysterious people who have set up orbit. They're sort of at odds with the Hapalox at the moment and have mostly left the people of Vatoa alone. But these other people have been dubbed by Vatoans the Landed. Mm. There have been rumors that these people are from the ancient ancestral home of the Musalians, people who came to this world thousands of years ago. And for those of you not familiar with Into the Motherlands, Musalians are the name that the humans who came to Vatoa took up. So these, there are rumors that these landed, these strange aliens who seem to be coming, stripping resources where they can from the planet without any regard to the people there, uh, and then leaving again. Uh, they have set up camp in orbit around Vitoa as well. And so these air raid siren-like alarms are not uncommon these days. And most people, when they hear them, immediately know, run for cover. But let me have all of you, we'll start out with our first roll of the evening. Well, let me have all of you put together a pool for noticing, for noticing things. So you can use your awareness skill, you could use your focus skill, I would buy. You could use, what are the other skills? You could <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, those skills? sound good. Uh, fo oh, empathy. I would also take empathy to sort of uh, get a read from the people around you. So grab a skill, grab a value, use your uh, D4 utility die and roll it up. You're looking for fours or higher on your dice. Count up how many dice in your pool, roll a four or higher, and then let me know okay, so the it's, total. Right. It's these dice and a d4? And a d4, yes. So a skill and a value. Sorry? A skill and a value. Yes, one skill, one value, and a utility die, d4. So a d4. Great. Uh, Essen, how do we do? Uh, so anything before or above is uh -huh. a success? Two yeah. successes. Two successes. We love to see it. Uh, Daji, how do we do? Two successes. Two successes. Mirin. You said higher than a four? A uh, four or higher. I have zero successes. Ooh, did you roll any ones? No. Okay, that's good. That means you did not critically fail. All right. Uh, Just and Invicta. a regular fail. <laughs> Just a regular fail. Invicta had to do. Uh, I will tell you in a minute because I rolled the wrong die. Because <laughs> clearly, I forgot how to play this game in the four days. You played on Wednesday. <laughs> it's been two days. <laughs> it's been a long but two a days. But a fun filled um, pack two days. Yeah. I got four successes. Okay. So, uh, Mirren, for you, unfortunately, as you uh, look around, you're, something seems off. You can tell that much, but you can't quite figure it out what it is before you kind of get knocked over uh, by, by frightened running people. So you're going to take one physical stress uh, from, that, from that major fail. Uh, Essen and uh, Daji, there is something uh, like a bright light that is in the sky that seems to be getting brighter. But it's hard to tell exactly what it is that's going on. Invicta, with four successes, you see, you see a Bitantu 
uh, sort of get knocked to the ground right near where you are. You watch the leader of the drum circle that you were sort of deposited near look up and seem to be looking at something, as does this enormous, this immensely tall, although maybe not for you, you're quite tall as well, uh, uh, Rakim, that are looking up at something, and you look up to see what it is they're seeing, and you, having dealt with similar things before, immediately clock what this is. There is a Hapalock ship, a relatively small Hapalock transport, that seems to be falling from orbit, and if your guess is right, its trajectory is going to have it landing right in the middle of Torch Island very shortly. Um, hopefully, I had some kind of communication device on me before my friends dragged me away. Ah, 50 50, roll, uh, just yeah. roll a die. Evens you do, the odds you don't. Oh boy. <laughs> Uh, that is a five. Oh, you do not. Dang they took it away from you. Well, then I, I rely on the power of my voice and just start screaming for people to vacate. Like, <laughs> get inside, get away from the middle of the island. I just start, and I'm not going to scream in the mic. I will swear you all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I just start screaming for people to, to get out of the way, and I go grab um, our fallen... Baton too. Baton yeah. Too, yes. yeah. Uh, so you, you two hear uh, a very authoritative high and all, uh, calling out instructions. Uh, it's hard to sort of tear your eyes away. The ship itself, now that you can sort of see it, it's a little bit closer, which is not great, uh, but you can see that it has these sort of long tentacles coming off of the back of it that are, that are flapping in the atmosphere as it begins to fall closer and closer to the island. Um, there are very few places at this point that are not already full up of festival goers, but if you wanted to try and run for cover, you could, uh, or if you wanted to do something else, let me know, Essen and Daji, what are you two doing? Um, upon hearing Invicta mm. and, and seeing essentially looking and seeing like, oh, there is, there is not only a tall but authoritative person who seems to know what's going on, uh, Essen will look for where the, where like the safety exits appear to be and very gently as, as people are running and, and, and bumping into just kind of, kind of touch each of them very gently to, to kind of give them a little bit of emotional stability so they can not panic. I love as much. That. I love that. Uh, will you roll up a pool for that for me? I, manipulation or persuasion, whatever feels more right in the moment. Um, how about you, Daji, while Essen rolls that up? Um, something slightly similar, but not really. I okay. think they would immediately want to make sure that the drum corps is safe. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, because they are definitely too young and too scared right now. Um, so he is trying to calm them and making sure that they get to um, a state of mental awareness that they can, you know, get what they need to get and go where they need to go without freaking out. He will handle it it's, somehow, but he wants to make sure that they are safe first. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so same, I would take middle be persuasion. I would take... Uh, I'm going to do persuasion. Yeah, persuasion, I think, is, is right. Uh, Essen, how'd it go? Uh, no successes and one critical fail. Uh, so you, it is a fraught moment, uh, and as you reach out, you're very good with empathy, you're very good at understanding emotions, uh, but in this moment, the sort of chaos of the moment has some unexpected emotions flying, and you just pick the wrong person who backhands you uh, and runs off thinking that you have fallen from the sky to kill them, I guess. Uh, so you are knocked to the ground, and you will take uh, one physical stress as well. Invicta, another person has gone down. <laughs> this time it looks like they got punched in the face beforehand, but anyway. Um, uh, Mirren, uh, you have been scooped up uh, by, by a very uh, calm, centered, and seemingly in control and like in charge, maybe, uh, high and all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to know. screaming, ah! I just want to note that I'm like holding this baton to you. Yes, like, definitely. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. What happened? I don't know. How did you get on the ground? Oh, somebody ran into me. Okay. What's happening? Um, Is this normal? No, this? no, no. Also, and I noticed your, I noticed the Volca. Mm -hmm. Why do you have a Volca? Oh, this is my friend. This I'm is, sorry, what? This is Brescia. That's have a, you met a Volca before? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Flashbacks to a Volca spitting fire rocks at Invicta and her crew. Yeah, yes, it didn't go well. <laughs> oh, yes. 
with that O, which is perfect. Uh, uh, Adaji, how did your pool go? Um, uh, can I argue that I can use my drum to kind of just like help? Oh, you? yes, absolutely Great. can. I'd yeah. rather use a D6 than a D4. Yeah, do it. <laughs> uh, ooh, that is three successes. Okay, yeah, you managed to, uh, to get there. You find one of the little uh, sort of air raid shelters nearby and you, uh, that, that the entrance is open for, and you immediately just guide the rest mm -hmm. of the drum circle like, down there. Now, now, little ones, do not fret. You will be fine. Playing a nice, like, march tattoo, <laughs> quick march tattoo, yeah, exactly. absolutely. Um, Invicta, you catch sight uh, of your crew, and they are also sort of getting people inside on the other side of the big central fountain. Uh, so they seem to have everything under control over there. Um, the four of you are some of the only ones sort of left out uh, outside, uh, whether on the ground or in someone's arms, or moving towards the shelter when the ship hits. And nope. it is an enormous collision with Torch Island, and I would like everyone, please, uh, to put together uh, pools with, I would take awareness, I would take grace. Uh, this is to try and uh, avoid the worst part of the impact. And now I get to roll to see how bad it is. I mean, to see how, no, I mean that, to see how bad it is. Thank you, <laughs> appreciate it. Since I've encountered Haplog before, can I use wisdom? Oh uh, yeah, I buy that for your value, yeah. Yes. I'm like, because I'm old? Can I use wisdom? Because I'm old. <laughs> no. You have a wealth of experience, so sure. <laughs> I'm going to use goes. that on you. Because <laughs> Invicta's old? No, because I'm old. <laughs> is that how this works? Yes. Uh, all right, so this is to uh, oh. try and avoid the worst of the... Hit. I am also going to use my history's eyes are on you talent. Okay, tell us more. Uh, a griot can recall a piece of history that may be beneficial to the current needs, adding a D6 to any role to recall this info. Uh, for each success beyond difficulty, they gain a, a D6 that can be applied to any role for that scene. So I'm thinking that if uh, I know how ships land and how they shouldn't land, um, <laughs> knowing uh, how many groups and, and individuals I have helped uh, or guided, I would think I would know how to uh, navigate this space yeah, without that makes sense. dying. <laughs> yeah, there was also, there was a, several decades ago, there was a pretty big meteor shower and some of the pieces kind of made it to the surface. Yeah. So between, you know, how a ship should land and also how meteors fall. Yeah, it's all yeah, that. Totally. I, like, okay. I like it. Recall that lore. Uh, how'd we do, Essen? I have one success and one critical failure. Okay, that's as long as you get no, if you... As long as you have at least one success, the ones don't matter. It's only if you have zero successes that ones on the die matter. Uh, 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 Miran, how'd we do? Two successes. Okay, Invicta. Three. All right, and... Uh, Four successes. Hey, look at one, two, three. Anyway, um, <laughs> great. So, uh, Essen, uh, as, the, as the ship hits, there is a bit of a shock wave uh, that sort of knocks you back. You don't take any stress, but you do sort of stumble again. You see this Rakeen has had just got back up and then gets bowled backwards by this shockwave. And I just, can you walk? <laughs> oh yes, okay, you can put me down now. Uh, okay, and I just like gently deposit the right. tattoo like, and I run over to this Rakeen. Mm -hmm. are, are you okay? Yes, is it always so vibrant here? No, I don't know what's happening. I know what's happening. It's those squid things. Do you know how to fight? Do all of you know how to fight? That is not necessarily my skills of expertise. So you're going to die, is what you're telling me. <laughs> no, I do not plan on dying anytime soon. <sighs> they would have left me here with three people I just met. I was cooking and minding my business. If I need to whack something with my stick, I can, but it is not um, going to be as effective, I would think. Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, as this ship lands, uh -huh. um, is there... Lands is generous. <laughs> hey, as, as it barrels to the ground like yeah. a wrecking ball. That's better. Um, um, does it seem like there's any activity happening with it, or is it just... What a great segue. So <laughs> as you look over to see how this ship has fared, now that it has come in like a wrecking ball, uh, you do see a hatch open. And at first there's sort of nothing, just darkness inside the open hatch, and then a tentacle. And then a second. Mm. 
and then very rapidly four more as a creature pulls itself out of the hatch and you see what looks sort of like a large squid, mm -mm. Uh, but encased in this, uh, in this transparent suit uh, that is clearly filled with uh, some sort of fluid, clear fluid, it could be water, but who knows. Uh, and they, ha they have these frills all along their, uh, the, b the body portion of this creature, and they are flashing their different colors uh, very rapidly, these, these bioluminescent frills. It sort of walks on two more of these enormously long tentacles mm -mm. Uh, that just sort of, and it, it almost looks like it should be unsteady, sort of like a, a stilt walker that isn't quite experienced enough. But once it gets fully out of the ship, uh, it sort of seems to steady itself and begin to look around. And Victor, you've seen this before. Is this normal? <laughs> no, none of this is normal. Well, if you were torch agents, maybe, but you're not a torch agent, are you? No. Damn. <laughs> but it sounds like you are, so I think we're okay. This is fine. I'm everyone. sorry, what? I'm not even dressed for combat. Can I ask a question? Absolutely, you can. can I can't imagine what it might be. <laughs> can this be uh, when my, my Volca friend starts coughing? <laughs> I think that is correct. Yes, this is exactly when your Volca friend starts coughing. <gasps> <laughs> where is the uh, where's the rock going? Uh, I think it's gonna be a bit like a cat coughing yeah. up a hairball. Yeah, great. Not very far at all. <laughs> Not yeah. very far at all. Uh -huh. Yeah, in fact, I think it you know, into sort of a little flower bed that just <laughs> immediately catches fire, um, which of course, unfortunately, catches the Hapalox. I visual organs. Anyway, uh, and this creature immediately orients on the four of you and very slowly begins uh, stilt walking towards you all. That was unfortunate. Did you, did Invictus say out loud that they don't have um, their armor or whatever? Well, I've always got my uh, Aventura dagger. I just don't have like my usual like going out in the field or torch uniform clothes. Mm -hmm. Um, but since it's Torch Island, can I find a uniform? You want to go Quick, look for a uniform? <laughs> like, if I, like if I look or if there's like a dead Torch agent, they don't need it anymore. I haven't killed anybody yet. <laughs> I Is said if. Real quick? <laughs> look, that ship landed. We don't know what it they landed on. They were in an on. unfortunate spot when the ship landed. Maybe they're just, you know, you they were gooey free. free and... After it got landed on? Look, it's, it's, it's a situation. I know what these Hapalock can do. All right, you can take a gooey suit from underneath the ship, but you're gonna have to get near the ship first, which brings Ew. me to, we should roll initiative. No! Oh, no. <laughs> oh no. Oh uh, no. So uh, these are, uh, same kind of a deal here. You wanna use things like grace, awareness, whatever you think uh, your character would use to react in a tense, oh, that's a good snap. To react in a tense moment. Uh, you're gonna count up your successes and I'm gonna get them uh, in a moment. Nope, that's a deep, no, that is the right die. Here we go. As this creature pulls out a couple of its tentacles, pull out what look like, almost like uh, the sort of triangular squid heads. It almost looks like that, but they are clearly some sort of firearm. This is wrong. Can, can Mirren take an action while this is happening? Hey, what is it? Mirren would like to go get what Brescia coughed up. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> You were ready for it. You knew it was coming. It's a stressful situation. I don't know. What kind of skills do you usually use for initiative? Uh, grace, focus, awareness, depending on whether it's moving quickly or being uh, aware that something dangerous is coming. Okay. Um, what about, you can also use your combat skills, so skirmish or brawl or targeting is also fine. What about the values? Uh, that's up to you. Whatever you, I mean, uh, you know, if you're fighting uh, f to make sure that you don't die, self makes sense. Okay. Uh, if it's about saving the people around you, maybe it's community or duty. Uh, okay. That is the beauty of this value system. We love it. Yeah. I'm going to add community to that. Great. Okay. Uh, make sure that you've got your uh, uh, successes counted up. And Victor, how'd we do? Two. Two. Uh, I think that's all right. Okay. Uh, how about, uh, great. Uh, Mirren, how'd you do? One success. One is four. Mirren. Okay. And uh, Essen? One. One success. Okay. And 
There we go. Uh, and Daji. So a success is a four or higher? Uh-huh. I don't like the way you're asking that. And uh, <laughs> if you have zero successes, any ones are a problem? Yeah, so okay. no successes and some ones and a one. is, is yeah, a critical you know, failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. okay. Uh, so, <laughs> so Daji is just completely flummoxed by the horror that is this creature, uh, which you have probably heard of, but very few Vitoans at this point have actually seen a Hapalock. They've mostly stayed in their ships either above uh, or, or in the water. So uh, uh, Daji will not go in the first round uh, and will take his first turn in the second round. You know, he's precious. He got time. <laughs> <laughs> he's just making sure that the fight is uh, reasonable. My at this leg point. is what he's doing. Right yeah, now. exactly right. Uh, so Invicta, uh, this works out great because you are the first one uh, to go. Uh, you can make it over to the ship with uh, one of your moves and then you can try and pull this, uh, this gear free uh, if you would like to as one of your actions. Can I recant that statement? Of course you can, yeah, absolutely. Uh, question, if I get close to the Hapalock, am mm -hmm. I with, within one action round, am I close to the Hapalock? Absolutely, yeah. It, it, it made it a while before you all decided to react. Um, I'm just trying to think of like what's good. Um, <laughs> I mean, nothing. It's a half block. There is no good. Right. Because I don't know if I want to get close to it. Um, can I actually hold my action and see what everyone else yes, does? Yes, absolutely. All right. So then the half block is going to go. Uh, and that, well, let's see. One, two, three, four. <laughs> no, no, roll it uh, roll again. No, do, do it again. Do it again. <laughs> That's it, I'm out. <laughs> uh, the Hapalog uh, sort of uh, takes all four of you in, five, I guess, we don't want to leave the Volca out, uh, and turns uh, to Essen and raises uh, one of the triangular sort of firearm things uh, and attempts to fire it at you. Um, you are going to make a dodge pool together. So whether, again, that's grace, uh, awareness to know that it's coming, um, but you are going to put together a pool to try and avoid. No, there's none of these are the right dice. This one and this one and these two. And That's a lot of dice. I don't like it. Listen, the Hapalox is no joke. I don't like the sound of that. Well, roll good then. <laughs> <laughs> How many successes did you get? Um, I have one success. Okay. So the Hapalock got three successes. So your one success is going to cancel one of those. Uh, so as the creature fires its, uh, its ray, its weapon at you, a sort of uh, multicolored ray that sort of matches the colors on the frills of this creature, fires out at you and strikes you in the chest, doing a total of, uh, what kind of armor do you have? What's your uh, armor rating? Uh, great. Uh, so doing four, uh, doing four stress, uh, to you as this beam strikes you right in the chest, and then the creature scuttles up right next to you and sort of looms. Uh, it is, in fact, on its two tentacles, it is even taller than you and sort of sort of looms over you. Uh, and you can see that the, the flashing lights on its frills seem to have some sort of a pattern and are almost hypnotic, not mechanically yet, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but you can see there's sort of a changing but, but repeating pattern to the lights there. Uh, that was the Hapalock, which brings us to Mirren. Well, right now, Mirren is in the burned flower bed. Yes. <laughs> Still a little bit on fire. Still a little bit. Just it's a little fine. bit. That's what the scrapped in fire suit is for. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and has picked up the rock that Brescia has vomited out. Uh -huh. uh, and the one thing that wasn't noticed, because I forgot to mention it, I'm so sorry, uh, was that Mirren is carrying a staff that holds a lantern ah. on the end. And so in this flower bed, she scoops up the rock, drops it into her lantern, and then lifts it up yes. and looks probably a little ridiculous because <laughs> who walks around with a lantern on the end of a metal pole? In, uh, in the middle of the day. In the middle of the day, <laughs> on the surface. Mm. And it's like, this is fine, this is fine. Uh, Looks at Brescia. Uh huh. Looks at where huh. Essen is like, oh no, now what? <laughs> <laughs> She's ready for something. All right. Uh, that mo oh, now it is Essen's turn. Hmm. Um, seeing the 
seeing that there appears to be a pattern, um, I would like to use one of Essence talents. Yeah. Uh, that is spirit message. Okay. And uh, a Sakawa may sacrifice one mental stress to instantly detect a target's mental state and what it would take to snap them out of it. So I want to get a read oh. and see if it's able to interpret what those colors mean. Yeah. No roll, I like that. All right, yeah. I do this, too. This, this, the pattern of lights, um, you, certainly you don't get words out of it, right? But it does seem to almost be a form of communication for this creature. And what you're getting is pain uh, and anger. Can I tell if the anger is focused on us or just the situation? No, the, more the situation and, and it's sort of, the pain is sort of influencing everything. And since this, this also says what it would take to snap them out of it, you see one of the creature's tentacles is, uh, is torn pretty severely and a little burned, probably from the crash. Mm. Yes. Yeah, I know Invicta's not gonna like this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Do these creatures, do, do they communicate? Are they, they are the, only hostile, correct? The, the lights, that's kind of their communication from what we know. All I can tell you is that this one is in pain, very likely from the crash. Is anything about this normal in dealing with them? No. <laughs> you all can understand the combinations of colors, but if you could, you would see it flashing. I'm standing right here. <laughs> and this is where I curse it, the camera so for leaving. They're changing and reacting as we're. As oh, we're for talking. sure, for sure. Do, do they? Do they understand us? Do they what? Do they understand us? Yes. Hello. <laughs> I mean, it's very. Otherwise, it's very rude. Otherwise. Um. It it landed in the middle of 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 the island, and it pro I've seen it pierce through a Monsagene. I just think it's perhaps important that we know what it wants before we do it any further harm. All right, I'm going to use my action then to do a okay. pull. Okay. Um, since I'm a smarty pants high and all that went to college and everything. <laughs> <laughs> University of Hollins. <laughs> I'm actually wearing the shirt. Um, I'm going to use science okay. and um, wisdom to see if I can figure out what exactly to do for this okay. for this half a lot. Uh -huh. Wow, I almost called it the wrong thing. <laughs> One, two, three. I got three successes. Nice. And you're trying to figure out how to, what are you trying to discern about it? Well, moment? I'm guessing that, you know, now that I've been told it's hurt and I can see it's, it's oh, yeah, droopy yeah, tentacle. Yeah, for sure. If there's droopy any- Droopy tentacle is the next bar I create for a game. The next tavern <laughs> is the droopy tentacle. Go I on. I don't want their daily special. Well, I, like, <laughs> I, I'm not a healer or anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm a fighter. Yeah. And so I'm looking at it and I'm like, ah, is there anything, I don't know if there's anything I would have learned in the time that I've been working for Torch about either healing it or can I yell for a Kemba or a lie? You're, you're welcome to yell for a Kemba. Kemba's long gone right now. Damn um, you and your cheese. <laughs> um, you know, there's been so little contact with the Hapalock since your crew sort of ran headlong into them. Um, so the only thing you can think is to care for it in the way that you would a Vatoan sea creature of a similar mm, construction. Um, but you're not sure if you have any tools to that right now, to do that right now. The other thing that occurs to you with three successes is that you have never encountered a non-hostile Hapalock, but if this thing is angry about something else, that's unusual. They're usually very focused on whoever they're trying to kill in the moment. Um, can any of you heal? I cannot necessarily heal, but if you need further assistance to protect yourself, that I can do. <laughs> I, I can try. Um, are you at all familiar with the makeup of these creatures? They're like creatures we learned of via the landed that were called, that were called legally distinct squid. <laughs> I don't think squid is trademark. I don't know. <laughs> is there a legal Call, call Miriam Webster's. We're in trouble. We're in trouble now. You never know. That's a cease and desist I didn't um, expect this year. 
<laughs> um, then, yes, I think Essen would like to use um, his remedy skill mm -hmm. and perhaps with um, kind of, uh, this is something that he's never encountered before, yeah. but using um, the Rakhine's kind of, s the ability to sense the current and the flow of living beings, totally. perhaps with Invictus' help, he might be able to diagnose or heal. Yeah, I mean, even just some like basic cephalopodian first aid, maybe. They teach all of that they at the do. university. At they the do, university yeah. Of okay, Rock. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I? Colleges uh, in this so episode. many colleges. Look, it's, it's HBCU. Uh, yeah, sure. Because uh, Mirren has a decent stat in science, so I feel like because that's understanding the natural world and the world around you, that Mirren would be like, okay, well, I don't know what you are, and I'm not quite sure what's happening, uh -huh. but maybe I can figure something out just based on what I understand of the natural world. Yeah, absolutely. Mirren has an action left uh, that you sort of held, so yeah, you can use that to assist. So roll up that pool, uh, and based on that pool, your utility die may be increased. Uh, so let's see how well Mirren does. Pull Do I you. have any actions left? Hmm? Do I have anything left? Uh, you moved up and then you... I mostly spoke. I oh, so it. then yes, you do. Uh, I'm going to lend uh, D6 as well from Remedy. Yes. So you get a... D6. And how many successes, Marin? Two. Two. Okay, so your utility die can go up to a D8. Ooh. Bizarre. Ooh. All right. As Marin's like, put it there. That's where it's hurt. <laughs> See that part that looks burned? very obvious injury. Because it's burned. Like... <laughs> I know about burns. Okay, from <laughs> well, that there, my fault. <laughs> there is one success. Okay. Um, yep, that's it. All right. <laughs> End of story. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> I mean, it's not um, a creature like the sea creatures on Batoa, right? It is its own distinct thing. But you can see where at least it is burned. That much is obvious, right? And so you can sort of try to poultice it. It resists uh, at first, immediately. I, I think Essen would approach... If, if he's approaching the creature and it is not, at that point, actively being antagonistic. I mean, for a Hapalock, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that is... Yeah. Right. We're still um, alive. So yeah. Right, exactly. <laughs> Essam would approach with both hands kind of up and out, and, and very slowly on his, his right hand, he's, he's been sort of wearing this metallic sleeve, and it starts to flow up onto his hand, so he kind of turns his palm over, and um, essentially his metallic sleeve um, from the static charts that all Rakeen have is reacting to that. And the particles, sort of like programmable matter, flow onto the Hapalox tentacle, forming a bit of a, a poultice bandage. It's, yeah. it's essentially cool because there was fire, so it's cold. The other thing that that does is it seals up a little bit of the, the part of the suit. As you get closer, you realize that the tentacles also had, were encased in this suit, mm -hmm. and it was torn there as well. So that has sort of the double effect of doing a little bit of like a poultice bandage on the tentacle itself, but also sealing that, that tear in the suit. And you all notice the creature sort of stiffens and, and freezes for a minute, and all of the lights go a single color and stop flashing. Um, completely unsurprisingly, you all have done nothing I expected, and I think we can, for at least the moment, listen, it's a haplog, but for the moment we can drop initiative so we can see if Daji wants to, uh, wants to participate here. <laughs> yeah, he's just been sitting in the back, you know, you know, <laughs> no, no, you know, <laughs> I, you know this is what it is. No, um, uh, I think he's just been assessing the situation mm -hmm. more than anything mm -hmm. to see if he needs to perhaps uh, not necessarily put this havelock in its place, but demoralize it in, in a way. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it seems like the havelock has um, calmed it down a little bit, uh -huh. um, he will step forward. Okay. Um, and seeing what Essen has done, um, he will say, um, we are not your enemies. We are simply here to celebrate. If you would like to celebrate with us, good. If you don't want to do that and cause more harm, then that would be a problem for you. The choice is yours. Interesting. How about a persuasion pool? <laughs> or, or, or manipulation, I suppose. Oh, no, but it persuasion. sounds persuasive to me. 100%. And let's see. Where am I? <laughs> 
based on that, can Essen help with this with this persuasive? Yeah, I mean, I think not, you're right there, really, and you're not really threat, but threat. You know, it's, 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 <laughs> not really it's, threat. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. We're gonna use another of my talent, which this does only last one scene. Uh, okay. That's work together or not at all. And uh, because you know how to get people to work together, I can grant one d6 bonus to any ally. Oh, I love that. All right, so add a d6 to your pool, uh, uh, Daji. Great. Uh, ooh, that is three successes. All right. Three successes. All right. Oh, well, there you go. I got two. So uh, the creature very slowly lowers the, the tentacle that had the, the firearm that it used. Um, and the frill of light goes, it was sort of a, a shocking, like, bright yellow that it had stopped at. And it sort of begins to fade to uh, a sort of softer... Uh, violet almost color, uh, and it very slowly begins to walk backwards away from the four of you, uh, tentacles at its side. I think um, Daji seeing this will look over at the others who are here um, and say, um, for now it is not attempting to hurt us. I believe that is a success. No, it's not attempting to kill us, what? Wait, say that one more time. Now that it's not attempting to kill us, what? An attempt to kill us later uh, is better than an attempt to kill us now. So, uh, <laughs> if, I guess. <laughs> if, if we have time on our side is what I am getting at. What, what, does, what does Torch do with... Hapalox, are they? Kill them. Including if they've done nothing to us? Oh, they've done plenty to us. They usually attack us first. But this one has not. That's why I'm not killing it. Then again, what do we do? I don't know. This is new. Do we need uh, to take it home? No. <laughs> You've already got a Volca at home. A I'm definitely like <laughs> petting them. You have a Volca at home. <laughs> Honestly, we all we all call this. We, we all call this for me. It's true. Nobody's we did. Surprised. Yeah. No. Um, can I do like a science check on it and see if there's any way like my dealings as a torch agent would help me communicate with it? Give it a try. Yeah, it's certainly going to be a high sure. DL, DL oh, uh, difficulty level because this is. This is this has never happened, right? It's been a little over a year since the Hapalox first sort of showed themselves to the mm -hmm. people of Batoa. And as you told Essen, not once have they ever not been hostile. At all. Follow-up question. Yeah. Since it uses uh, what it, it appears to use lights to communicate, mm -hmm. would my Bulka friend Brescia with glowing be able to... It's not the same. That's very funny. Um, interesting. Maybe. I love that. Why don't you... Do you have... Did we give you stats for your Volca? Yes. Okay. Can I see them? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's a new system. I don't have everything memorized yet. I printed it out, y'all. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Do... <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, I'm still excited by this game. I'm still learning. Um, yeah, how about like, I would take either uh, authority or survival from the Volca, and you can add a D4 utility die. Okay, I got three successes. Three successes. Um, roll that know. up and I'll, I'll get to you, but Invicta. Do you wanna know what I used? I, it <laughs> sounds like I should, so yes. I don't know. Um, I, I scienced it. Okay. And I also did information. Oh, great. Okay. You, I think what you have been able to glean over the past year, or what Torch has been able to glean, has passed on to you and the crew, um, are, is that the colors mean something and the frequency with which they flash uh, means something. You haven't really been able to translate anything specific, but you've gotten sort of and moods almost, mm. right? Because uh, we definitely want to compare these terrifying squid creatures to mood rings. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, so you could, if you had access to the right color lights that you could sort of strobe as you needed, you might be able to at least 
convey, you know, <laughs> we come in peace or, or, or not. I don't know. Maybe it's invicted. It's hard to say. Uh, is there any way to mimic the violet light it's putting out? Perhaps if you find something that might be useful for that. Think about it. Let me see what uh, Mirren has for us. One success. Um, <laughs> so your Volca just starts like flashing. <laughs> just like kind of indiscriminately. There's really only one color going on. Uh, and it doesn't upset the Hapalock, but it does sort of seem to mesmerize it for a moment as its big old squid body sort of tilts to the side like a confused dog sort of looking at your Volca. Uh, and it, it, for the moment, it has at least stopped backing away from you. <laughs> You're not sure what the Volca's saying. And I'm, I'm just petting like Brushy on the head, like, well done. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Good job. <laughs> Uh, you could certainly look for something that might be able to do that. I mean, there are light fixtures you, around. You're at a festival, so maybe maybe. Oh, is, is there a, a string of lights around? Definitely. I pull down some string of lights. Okay. And start waving it. At them. <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> are you just like doing? I just. Yes. <laughs> I can't really describe the joy it brings me to imagine Invicta, our. Um, <laughs> Let's say, not hesitant to use violence, <laughs> seven-ish foot tall hyena person, just sort of dancing with some fairy lights <laughs> at a half a lock. I kind of love that. Um, it, yeah, is please. It, <laughs> wow. uh, clearly, the colors mean something. Um, and while we have not been able to necessarily uh, uh, decipher it now mm -hmm. in history, has there been anything that certain colors are are associated oh. with? And can I kind of start cross-referencing? That's interesting. What? Give it a try. Let's see how it goes. What color is it right now? He says, um, right now, it's a, a sort of greenish color as it looks at, at the Volca. Okay. Yeah. What am I looking for? Listen, I have good dice for this. Let's don't do me You wrong. just gotta get four or better. And I got utility. <laughs> um, I don't think I can use my drum to help with this. Uh, probably not with this one. <laughs> I mean, I could. Uh, no. Um, oh, nor clear. Okay. Is that one, two, three, four? Is that right? Yes. Show me potato salad. Uh, uh. Two successes. Two successes. Um, it's. Are we sure? I, I couldn't tell if that was a one or a four. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, there are some real basic sort of ideas, right? You probably don't want to use any like bright, warm colors, right? Like maybe let's stay away from reds and yellows. Fair. Uh, you know, violet seems to be a sort of calming color, and that kind of makes sense to you. The other thing that I will say is like you realize one of the difficulties you're gonna have is that almost certainly, in, in historically, uh, creatures that communicate sort of in, not exactly this way, but in similar ways, tend to, if they're looking for color, they tend to probably have uh, vision that can see beyond the sort of typical visual spectrum. So there are other colors, right? You may need to use infrared or ultraviolet to really get a full sort of conversation going. Okay. Huh. Are there any items in Vutoa? Because we have a lot of technological advances yeah, in yeah. this world. Are there any items that I know of that can produce a plethora of colors? That could produce what? A plethora of colors. Yeah. I mean, I mean, there are a bunch at this festival, right? There are all kinds of like uh, hollow devices that sort of do light shows and things like that. Um, you know, laser pointer type things. Cause those okay, are, are any of them accessible? The uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, you could definitely find some of the places where there are emitters that are set up for the evening festive, for like for the evening show, the sort of legally distinct illuminations. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. I guess so, I, me Disney. More, more importantly, uh, are they all like <laughs> J-rigged to like to be like fixtures or anything like handheld? Uh, you I, could, like, I mean, you could make them handheld. <laughs> Just we about to start up. ripping things off. Yeah. Like, Listen, this is an emergency. You could, yeah. You know what? Let, let's try it. All right. I'm going to like point um, at one of the lights and then look at the tall people. <laughs> um, 
I have a staff. I can knock things down. <laughs> you know, I have a walking stick too, but I think I would break it, uh, or probably break myself before I break it. Um, and I go, um, can uh, what accent am I about to go into? Because it was not where I needed. Um, that light over there. Can someone uh, please grab it for me? Um, don't look at me. I'm waving. <laughs> yeah, I'm just busy. Dancing. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yeah, Essen will, as indicated, will reach up and yeah. and grab the light fixture. This is what you want. I, I have an idea, but I do not know if it's going to work. Um, and as uh, I take the light and I try to like manipulate it, I'm going to try to match the exact same color of the Hapalock. Okay. Just to see how it reacts. Okay. At the moment, it has the, it's sort of that confused green, and you can you can grab Invicta and sort of bring her over to sort of start. You know, you pick a couple of the green lights and just like flash them at the creature, uh, and you manage to match it, and it turns to the two of you with that same sort of bemused look, and then it pulses. Uh, that same color doesn't change, but it pulses a little brighter twice as it looks to the two of you. And you seeing that it pulses, mm -hmm. I'm going to like find something to like block the light and try to make it pulse twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Invicta. I suddenly feel like we're in close encounters, but yes, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish the rest of the crew could see you now and try to talk to us. Oh no, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's watching this. Ila is making notes. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, you get it to pulse. And uh, or you, you flash the lights at it, and it's ever so slight, but it almost looks like it sort of nods to you and continues walking back a little bit faster and begins to climb back into its vessel. I will look at Invicta and say, I will be honest with you, I have no idea what I just said, but if it does not kill us, then again, this is a success. This is weird. I've never seen a Hapalock just leave. Perhaps we were not its target. Perhaps we were just collateral damage. Damn it. Can we look at the ship to see if it's just to... It, I mean, it, it's crashed, mm -hmm. but is there anything obviously aside from crash damage that looks like damage? Like, did anything damage it before the damage? I'd like, you know, like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, the damage. They have battle damage instead of or crashing. a failure, a system like as a system failure or damage because yeah. Invicta already said this is uncommon. Yeah, so usually wondering... when a half block show up, they show up with an agenda and they don't leave until they've killed or captured or whatever they're up to. So according to you, this is extremely unlikely to have happened in Torch history. This is something new, and at that, Essence eyes kind of light up. Perhaps their ship simply failed. That was going to be my next question. Yeah. Trajectory, as I, I clearly used my ability to kind of think about things falling. Did it land or did it fall? Oh, no, it fell. How, how damage? What a good question. Why don't we all, anyone who wants to look at the ship for signs of damage or anything else, uh, I would take science, I would take investigation, I would take awareness, actually, for reasons. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it, it's fine. Uh, this is fine. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, pull your, together your pools, and then uh, as I come around, let me know what skill you chose, again, for reasons. What? Don't trust. <laughs> then don't roll awareness. Uh, <laughs> well, Ew. All right. Uh, Essen, how'd you do? Uh, no successes. Okay, uh, any ones? Nope. Okay. Uh, I don't care what your skill was. No, I do. What skill did you use? <laughs> I used awareness. Okay, great. <laughs> wow. Amazing. All right, Mirren, how'd you do? Uh, I have three successes. How many? Three. Three, and what was your skill? Which is most going to help me right now? Depends on what you want. I mean, they're all going to give you something a little bit different, so you tell me. Oh, that's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, in this case, I'm going to say awareness okay because we're investigating a scene great love it uh invicta uh three successes okay and what I, was your skill 
I also used awareness. Loving this. And Daji. Oh, awareness. I also have three successes. Did you also use awareness? I used focus. Thank you. Okay, great. <laughs> I just needed somebody to use something else. Wait, wait. Can I change my answer? <laughs> yeah, okay, sure. Why not? Okay, it's investigation. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> Daji, you can see that it's going to take some, like, not insignificant repairs because uh, it looks like some of the like engine systems are pretty badly damaged. Mm -hmm. Mirren, you can see that they are damaged because of what looks like weapons fire. This ship looks like it was in some sort of a firefight before it mm. fell. Invicta, you start looking at the ship to try and figure out any of this information, but something else catches your eye immediately. There is somebody crouched and hidden behind, like on the other side of this fallen ship. How many successes? Three. You can see that they, you recognize the outfit that they're wearing. It is a full body encasing black outfit with a helmet, with a sort of tinted visor that you can't see through. This looks like a landed a, a person that is hiding behind this, on the other side of this Hapalock ship. Oh boy. Oh God, I'm terrified. Oh, depending on what you say next, I know what I'm. I'm going not going to say anything next. I have given you all your information. Go. Um, <laughs> I, I'm going to invoke one of my talents. Oh no! Yeah, you know, I know which I, one. Yeah, go on. Uh, so I've not got a chance to do this on the show. It's called Honor, one on one during battle. The character can select a target for a duel. We're not in battle, but a battle of wits. Uh, both participants are now locked in honorable one-on-one -on -one battle with neither able to attack an outside target, though one of them can defend against outside attacks. The landed have caused us no shortage of hassle. Yeah. Mm. And I just, like, yell. D wait, do landed speak a different language? Um, they have been able to understand you all. They have some sort of translator devices that you've seen them use before. So they, they tend to understand, at least your crew, when your crew has run into them. Uh, I call the landed that, I, that I've noticed. You, get out of here. Face me. I love it. Uh, as this is happening, I think Mirren had something else, and, I'll, and then well, we'll resolve that. I was going to ask if, yeah. uh, because Brescia was trying to communicate earlier uh -huh. and was trying to flash, I feel like that would have potentially superheated them again. Oh, absolutely. And oh. this would be the moment. Oh. <laughs> but I would just be like, so, so Mirren is sitting there like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> patting like Russia, like now, now would be good. Now would be really good. Oh. And like it's stuck. pointing oh. at the oh. Oh. It's stuck. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll get to it in just a minute. Uh, you too, yes. Uh, I don't think I see the landed, but hearing Invicta, um, clearly call out to someone. Uh -huh. I think he realizes that uh, there's more afoot. Um, and something inside him almost begins to um, get excited. You see them start to play their drum. Ooh, okay. Um, and they say, well, this is not something I've done in a long time, but if we need to fight and actually win, then let's do this. Uh, and I'm prepping something. Nothing's happening just yet. Okay. I'm just prepping something ready to um, tell a certain tale. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is wild. So, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Mirren, let's start with this Volca. Go ahead and roll a stone attack. Attack pool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> And then, uh, and, and Invicta, you see that as you call out to this landed, they have one of their weapons at the ready, and they were clearly about to point it at the Hapalock, uh, but hearing you and seeing you and just the call that you give them is sort of infused with this, with this power, uh, they turn to face you, uh, not quite pointing their weapon at you yet, but they have clearly at least broken off the attack against the Hapalock. Uh, Mirren, how'd the, how'd the vocal do? Uh, I got two successes. Okay. Uh, hold on. Mm -mm -mm. Here we go. Uh, yes, what did, what did we say the damage was on those? Oh, it reduces armor, right? Yes, reduces the target's defense armor by one. Okay, great, got it. So yeah, the uh, and then just <laughs> fires out. This one is not like a cat hairball, right? This one is a projectile. 
uh, and the, you see the hapalog sort of stumble and fall into the hatch uh, as this as this superheated rock goes flying by it uh, and hits the landed that you have just challenged straight in the chest. And you can see a part of this this black uh, armor suit that they're wearing sort of begins to sin uh, begins to sizzle and smoke, uh, and there is a little bit of uh, of now a hole in this armor, but you also can see that uh, it begins to sort of close up, almost as if it has some sort of repair technology to it. But it, it's going to take a minute for it to to get that back. And, and, and Mirren's just like, direct hit, well done, we're getting better. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I know good. I can't. In, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Invicta, what's the plan here? Oh, I noticed the hole that the Volca left in the armor. Heck yeah. Thank you for leaving me an opening. <laughs> and I am going to use skirmish. Okay. And there we go. <laughs> um, and justice, because it can be fairness or vengeance. Uh, yeah, yep. Um, and so I'm using. Can I, I call are you about to attack them? Yes, absolutely. I'm go as it happens. Mm -hmm. You see me start to play my drum a little faster, uh, and I say. That will strike true. That will strike true. And there's suddenly like a rhythm to what he's saying. As I start to use my drum to aid you in this attack, um, I have to roll against a difficulty of two, I believe. I believe that's right. Uh, if I succeed, I'm giving you an additional d6 for your attack roll. Okay. Um, so I'm going to make this. Can I argue this is arts? No, this is manipulation. Did you say art? No, it's manipulation. It's literally said in the thing. It's manipulation. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Listen, I, I thought I picked one, but I don't remember. <laughs> no, yeah, no, we did, we did, we did that. So that, that, and then uh, I'm using you. I'm using a utility die. Uh, I'm not using my talents for this. <laughs> uh, you made fun of my Volca puke noise. That is two successes. <laughs> Okay, that's what you needed. Uh, so, Invicta, you feel the rhythm of that drum just sort of egging you on a little bit more. You can add a d6 to your uh, to your attack pool. Excellent. This poor man. Look, they they picked should, the wrong they day. ran up. They picked the wrong day. Truly. Uh, that is only two successes. Oh, okay. Uh, what is the damage on your dagger? My dagger. Also does four damage. Okay, and two successes, you said? Oh, wait, I messed up my utility die. I rolled a six instead of a eight, so. Oh, for your dagger, yeah. Yep. And that still didn't give me enough. Okay, all right, but still two successes, uh, and it's four damage each, so that's eight total damage, uh, and you you aim it well, sort of for the edge of where this, uh, this Volca burned hole is uh, beginning to close up, uh, and so you managed to get a fair bit of, where's my, here we go. Uh, a fair bit of damage through. Um, and it is going to now face off against you, and then I will come to the rest of you. But it is going to face off against you, and sort of surprisingly, uh, it's going to take its its uh, rifle that it had and try and hit you in the face with the butt of the rifle. Oh, that's that not going to go is, well. No, Rude. I don't imagine that it is. But listen, he's it's a spur-of-the-moment decision. I don't know what to tell you. All right, here we go. Spur of the moment. About to find out. Oh, that's not too bad. Okay, uh, roll a, you're going to put together a, a, a defense pool. So uh, grace or awareness or uh, skirmish is fine also uh, to try and avoid the attack. Uh, skirmish, because my, my dagger's d d8. Doing things real time, y'all. <laughs> um, I'm going to do justice. All right. Ooh, that is three or four successes. Okay, so you managed to uh, avoid the the uh, butt of the rifle entirely, uh, and he's not super, uh, sort of takes a step back, uh, surprised, and flips the rifle around and uses a second action to try and, try and fire at you, but you're a little close up for this not small rifle that he's got. So it'll be like XCOM. Y yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, yeah, <laughs> wow. Just like that. Uh huh. That's exactly what I was thinking when I described it. Uh, roll that defense pool again. Oh, no. <laughs> Dang, <damn> it. <laughs> Ooh. 
Four successes out of four. Damn, okay, that is a critical success. So you managed to dodge out of the way, uh, and you can, right now, you can roll another attack with that dagger for that critical success. Oh boy. Um, I can put a d6 in here somewhere. All right. Uh, that is only one success, though. But I so four more points. Of, no, yep, four more points. Damn. Just one more. Okay. Uh, the uh, yeah, you get right sort of on the edge of where the armor is is torn. Uh, so it does a bit of damage. Damage. Uh, all right. How about the rest of you? This situation. We can certainly get into an initiative, but I think we've sort of found a rhythm right now. So what are the rest of you doing? How are we reacting? The Hapalock has fallen into its ship. This landed came out of nowhere. Uh, Invicta definitely saw that it was about ready to attack the Hapalock. Uh, what, uh, Essen, what's, what's the reaction here? Oh, what's um, the play? Essen, since the Hapalock can't understand us, just yells to stay, stay inside. <laughs> it's a little tentacle comes out, thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely doesn't Wait, what happen. Color what, what color was it flashing? Me. We yep. need to write these down, because I don't want to look like, come on. It would um, kill me if you heard me describe his Hapalock um, that way. And... Uh, seeing, seeing that we actually do now have a, a proper weapon, an enemy that, that he understands, mm -hmm. um, it's going to aim his gun at it. Um, the, again, the, the, for, the forearm bracelet, once again, like those particles change and they flow into his hand and yeah. form a gun yeah. that he will now point at the landed who has unwisely threatened this very tall, dynamic high yeah. all. <laughs> so... Let's see eight for that. And do I, what do I, how do uh, I? So targeting is what you're going to use Ooh. for, uh, yep, that's the one. And then you've got utility and then pick a value. Oh, okay. Um, maybe, maybe, oh, I mean, I don't know. You could tell me why you want to use revelry. <laughs> it I is mean, a festival. It's, well, you know, look, and <laughs> honestly, I guess it's it's is no. trying to get back to celebrating. <laughs> You know, this has ruined everyone's day. So I think that maybe revelry, uh -huh. you know, spreading fun and joy. Just and put a D8 her eyes stop. lit up when it came time to call out this attack. So maybe he's just helping her celebrate. I love a one shot. Go for it. <laughs> um, I need y'all to know all of my highest stats are in arts type of things and we're fighting. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. not built like, for this I feel like all. I did not expect um, this much combat. Nor yeah. did I. <laughs> I'm sorry Wait, what? how long we've been playing this yeah, game. Yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> that's a fair point. Uh, that is one success. Okay, great. Uh, and what did we say? Damage three. Uh, great. It's a good thing that hole hadn't closed up yet. Uh, okay. And uh, well, Mir I mean, the Volca went, but Mirren, would you like to do anything? <laughs> Things I did not I'm have sorry, on my list I just today. Can't with it. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> I just, did this to myself. Yeah, everyone. don't apologize. Uh, <laughs> how far is this? Uh, it's one one distance zone away from you, so you can get to it with an action if okay. you need to. Um, I can't decide if I'm going to help or hurt by trying to take part in this. But... I can't wait to find out. <laughs> but you know what? You said one distance, but I have a staff. Do I have to be very close to it? For that staff, yeah, you'll need to be with You'll need to be in the same zone as it to hit with the with that staff. Okay. Well, you know what? We're gonna try. Absolutely. Like, Russia, you got this. You got one hit. It's okay. You can do it again. You can and do it. <laughs> you can do it. You know, positive reinforcement. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's fine. And and moves forward with the staff. Um, and takes a swing, trying very intentionally to hit with the lantern because it has been filled with one of the gizzard rocks from Brescia. Yeah. Okay. And I'm like, now I have to make a pool, don't I? <laughs> yes. Uh, skirmish, uh, it makes the most sense, but if you've got something else you wanna to talk to him about, that's fine. Uh, brawl is, although you are using a weapon, so brawl isn't quite right. Uh, we'll do skirmish. Yeah, and then uh, I think we said the staff has a D, I don't know if I said this to you, but it should have a D6 utility if you're using it as a weapon. You did not, so thanks. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and then, uh, and then a value. I'm going to go with self, because we're trying to stay alive here. I don't really know much about the landed, because I'm a Batantu and I've spent a lot of time underground, but I'm like, everybody else is attacking it, so it must be bad. <laughs> I mean, yes. <laughs> you actually have probably heard, I will say, Mirren, 
um, since you are a Batantu uh, and, and would have been around some of the underground settlements, which of course are not exclusively Batantu, right? There aren't single, uh, single culture cities. Yeah. Uh, there are culture founded cities. Um, but if you had passed by any of the Batantu founded cities, underground cities lately, you might have heard a story uh, about how a couple of months ago, uh, some of these landed folk infiltrated one of, uh, like, a newer research station uh, and injured several researchers there when they were trying to get at something. Okay. So I'd have a little bit of context. I'd still be a little confused, but yeah. I mostly got it. Yeah, at least the landed, you would have heard, like, Batantu-specific stories about. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I only have one success. Okay, uh, so that is three. Yeah, okay, so again, like, right as you watch as the, the technology sort of closes up this hole right after you manage to just sort of jab into it with your, with your pole, uh, and the armor has knitted itself, but you did still get that hit in before it got to, before this uh, landed got to go again. Um, you all watch as uh, the landed sort of looks around at the four of you, looks back to the hatch of the Hapalock ship, sort of, shakes his head and takes off running, he said while looking at Invicta, knowing what might mm. happen next. <laughs> I mean... Uh, you tell me. I mean, my day was interrupted. I was having the time. He didn't interrupt your day. He's a landed. He must die. Okay. <laughs> you should not be surprised. <laughs> right? Wait, can I add on to this too? By all means. <laughs> oh my God, are you sending the vocal with me? Oh, oh, and what, uh, I feel like we're now about a turn later, and Brescia has another rock ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> this noise. <laughs> so if Invicta, whatever action Invicta takes, we will, Brescia will have a parting shot. <laughs> can I do something right before this? Absolutely, you can. Um, <laughs> Stop. Why is it so accurate? <laughs> is what I need to know. Why is it so you accurate? Yeah, honey, I do. <laughs> Would you? <laughs> In this land, would you argue that there are sometimes these uh, portable devices to like be like barricades of things that people might use in, in like dire situations to make sure they have like cover? Oh yeah, sure. Great. You also have a, well, listen, I don't want to tell you what to do, but you do have kind of a cool talent that could just make hi, whatever hi, you want. Hello. Is that what's happening? Shh, love it. Um, <laughs> I start, you see that he's playing this, uh, this drum and you, uh, behind you all, I think he's behind most people right now, uh, there's this low just, and as he begins to continue playing this drum, almost like these particles are starting to form. But they're not forming in front of him. They're, part, they're f forming where this individual is starting to run. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and as I telltale conjuration, I'm going to, I don't know how much this thing costs. Uh -huh. Uh, it too is fine, yeah. So just like one unit. Of Great. Your, yeah. Um, uh, I sacrifice a bit of my social stress mm -hmm. as I literally conjure something out of nothing with the melody that I can invoke. And I am intending for him to run into the, this barrier. Um, one, so Invicta and <laughs> can get them easily. <laughs> Two, so he uh, can uh, immediately uh, hold, run I'm sorry, away. hold on. It's actually... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but that is my plan, yeah. uh, just to make sure that he doesn't get away as fast. If anything, he's splats into the wall. Essen, you want to hand on this before these two <laughs> at him? I, why, is, why are they both doing it now? <laughs> Everybody wants a little hubbed. <laughs> <laughs> this is on the internet, y'all. This is, yeah, this is live. We've okay. made so many mistakes. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, Let's see, he was, okay, yeah, like Essen aimed and he was, he's running now for the thing and he's yeah, running towards the thing. It's not gonna go it's, well. No, it's not. Um, no, I honestly, no, at, at, at this point. <laughs> Just let him have it. At, at this point, like now, yeah. Essen is honestly leaning really hard into his value of revelry and you just see him tilt his head back and laugh. Aww. Holding, hold, like it's just on the verge because he can see it coming. Yeah, this is And it's like gonna be shit. so good. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all right. Oh, what's the order here? The wall, <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever Invicta's gonna do to cut this man down. The, the cell, splat. That's, that's the new cell block tango. <laughs> that's what that is. Pop, six. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Shits. All right. Um, 
No. No, this man, Wiley Coyote, is into this new barrier that, uh, that Daji has put up. Just right, he's sort of looking back, right, realizing that you have challenged him, right? So the odds that you're going to let him get away from this honorable challenge are pretty low, and he recognizes that. So he's looking back at you, and then sort of stumbles on just something on the ground, turns back, and face plants into this wall. So uh, let's check the armor from the vault. <sighs> uh, so why don't you, the, what's the utility die that you're using for this? Uh it says the pool is 2d8s, 1d6, and 1d4. Okay, so that d4, switch that out to a d6. Okay. Since it just face planted, I know which one it is, it is a choice. <laughs> Some of them have not done well for yeah. me tonight, so. <laughs> I feel that. None of mine just did. Oh, no. Uh, that is one success. One success. Uh, where is he? Where's his defense? Uh, oh, that's because this is Daji's character sheet. That's why. Here we go. Yeah, um, I, I didn't know what my defense was. <laughs> you good? I mean, honestly, at this point, nobody's we're not taking a shot. Yeah, 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 uh, yeah, <laughs> all right. So one success. Uh, the, <laughs> so he hits the wall, right? And since we're going Wiley e. Coyote anyway, because what is genre? Uh, he sort of peels off and falls backwards, and <laughs> just sort of goes right where he was on the wall. Uh, and burns a little hole into this wall, but does miss him, unfortunately. Um, but uh, that just means he has a little tiny bit more armor uh, to deflect Invictus. Um, I use grace because it is a physical feat. I mean, we've seen nature videos of hyenas. Sure. Imagine a seven-foot hyena looking I would at rather you. not. <laughs> you let me do this. <laughs> uh, so that will be, she is beauty, she is grace. She's going to stick him in the face. <laughs> Fair. Wild. Uh, yeah, go for it. Um, oh, I rolled. It is four successes in oh. my dagger. Hold on, though. Okay. My Tell dagger more. already does four each. It does. That's and 16. And I am now, because I'm using my dagger, it's extension of my being. Yes. So I'm going to roll another d6 to add to that damage. Correct. Oh, boy. <laughs> what are we at? 16? Uh, that is only a one. 17. So, so 17 damage That's on this landing. So, well, I mean, some of it he gets to defense away not, not nearly enough though i have to tell yeah not nearly enough i have to tell you uh 17 minus 3 is 14 plus 6 is 20. yeah um well you tell me do i get to kill you him? do oh i i do like a running don't clap yet wait till she describes it. it's gonna be awful oh no <laughs> uh, i think you mean awesome I, that's the same word wait till sunday <laughs> Um, you see Invicta just take like this graceful flying leap, dagger flashing as she just like, she lands and you think she's just gonna like stab him. Oh no, this is like total anime, <laughs> no. head off in one stroke spray of blood on this electrified fence. <laughs> How many heads is Invicta just like lopped off and left behind at this point? Mm -mm. Just, mm -mm. do you How keep count? We, have, oh, we don't have Yeah, we don't have You're probably not yeah. now. Can, can I just say? half hour. <laughs> We said that Invicta was in her comfy clothes. I'm just kind of imagining her in like pajamas doing this. <laughs> Toe beans flashing. Oh, claws come out. She's mad. Incredible, incredible. Yeah, uh, and he just drops. Um, the Hapalock has sort of put out a few more tentacles to pull itself out. So just sort of the top half of its I gotta come up with body words for these creatures. Torso, I guess. Sure. Sure. Orax. Is uh, is sort of watching this whole thing, and as it sees Invicta finish off this this creature, uh, it sort of begins to flash. Daji, you since you have a little bit of familiarity with what the colors might mean, it seems to be sort of like a. Well, sort of celebratory, right? It's almost like the string of, of fairy lights that, that Invicta had before. It's just a bunch of colors, mostly in sort of cooler hues, that just sort of looks celebratory. Interesting. Yeah, I think I do. Do, 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 do. Um, uh, And I look over uh, at Invicta and everyone over there. Um, well, he does not have an enemy anymore, so I think it is excited. Wait, I just saved a Havelock. What is happening? We call this um, growth. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, she doesn't even know the half of it. Wow. I just, 
I just met you and I don't like you. <laughs> Do not worry. I have heard this multiple times throughout my life. <laughs> I love and it. I just, I turn and look at the half block, like, go before I change my mind. Um, and whether or not it understands every word that you have said, you see it sort of horribly scramble out uh, and go back to the engine area that you all noticed was damaged. And it sort of begins very quickly to make uh, makeshift repairs, but like remarkably um, competent and fast and effective repairs hmm. in a way that if anyone is thinking too hard about the fact that these are creatures that are currently kind of at war with Vitoa, it's not the best to see them be able to repair themselves and their ships so easily, but anyway, mm. here we are. Um, and just a few minutes later, uh, it scrambles back in into uh, the hatch, uh, and the hatch is beginning to close, and a little tentacle comes out, and uh, it's got some frills on it, and it just sort of pulses a light blue a few times at you all, and then I'm going to notate this, because I think it means thank you. Yeah. I could be wrong. It could be like, I'm coming back to kill you. <laughs> but <laughs> and we're just like waving, thing. like, safe travels. <laughs> <laughs> so sweet. Um, and the ship uh, begins to rumble and manages to lift off uh, and then takes flight. You all wow. notice, though, you remember where it came from, and you can see Hapalock and landed ships, even, even here, because mm. uh, they're in pretty low orbit. This ship doesn't seem to be going to rejoin the rest of the Hapalock fleet. Mm. It sort of takes its heads up and then sort of takes off in the opposite direction, and you watch it until it's out of sight, but it's not going in, in the direction of any of the Hapalock ships currently visible in orbit. It's going on vacation because it's tired. <laughs> it's like, listen, I earned this. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's a moment of silence and then cheers erupt. And you see people from the festival who have been sort of hiding in the various shelters uh, have been watching through cracked doors and little windows and things like that, and they all begin to file at back out into the square, cheering and applauding. It's not clear if they're cheering because you saved them or because they thought it was a show, but they're very excited. <laughs> <laughs> You're I think... just like, well done, everyone. Okay, like, does the, does the festival start again now? Uh... And everyone seems to be sort of beginning to celebrate. It, they're remarkably resilient, Vatoans, uh, and they're sort of are going back to their celebrations, I, I was, as far I, as you I, can tell. I was going to say that I think um, seeing that they're cheering excited, but there's still a level of was this real or was that part of a performance mm -hmm. or whatever. And he's just going to uh, hit his drums very hard and go, come out, everyone. That is our show for today. Get back to celebration. <laughs> We are here to, uh, to celebrate, what is this thing called? Found, found Foundation Day. <laughs> found, 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 foundling Day. <laughs> yes, close yes, enough. That, they, that, with, that. The, with the intent of making sure they didn't realize what actually just happened. Yeah, uh, do a manipulation pool for me. Uh, I mean, some of them are already very willing to either believe you or just not not believe the reality <laughs> of what happened. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah, exactly. It's easier that way. Um, but there are some people who are sort of eyeing you. Let's see how mm -hmm. convincing you are. I'm going to be very excited and joyous and fun and hitting my drum as I use revelry for this. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, you said manipulation. <laughs> yeah. One, two, three successes. Yeah, all right. Um, so everyone seems, everyone at least in the general vicinity seems very willing to accept that this was a, a, a unique Founders Day, a Foundation Day, what, I've lost the name. <laughs> a unique Foundation Day, uh, new tradition. Of course, they're gonna expect the four of you to come back every year now and reenact it, mm. but uh, there we are. Uh, as the revels uh, start up again, um, Invicta, you hear a familiar voice uh, from a little ways off coming towards you and saying, Invicta, uh, that was incredibly impress impress impressive. And Major Rafia, uh, your superior at Torch, uh, a Monsagene woman uh, with a cracked face plate uh, who's been around the block several times, uh, comes out and congratulates you and says, um, 
the four of you were incredibly impressive. You even managed to convince, convince, convince the people here that there was nothing amiss. Why can't your crew do that? <laughs> All right, Rafia, you want another crack in a faceplate? You d She sort of stands up a little straighter, takes her collar and like adjusts where her rank pips are sort of I, thing. I know your rank. <laughs> I'm aware. She says, this is my day off. <laughs> she says, I was actually try, try, trying to compliment you, but here we are. You failed. <laughs> I know as a Monsagani, that is a foreign concept to you, oh. Major Rafia. We fail often, Invicta. We all, all, all do. But I congratulate the four of you. You three uh, do not recognize you here. You are not, I believe, Eve, Eve agents of Torch. Um, I am too old for this stuff. <laughs> Uh, she sort of nods sagely at you as if to say, yeah, me too. <laughs> I was simply coming because I wanted to see Foundation Day. Do I need to pay for that flower bed? <laughs> <laughs> Another one sets ablaze. Um, she's a sweet girl, but I, I think she and her Volka need some training. <laughs> Perhaps we can provide that. And no, 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 <laughs> you, you don't need to pay for the flower bed, bed. I think Torch may have a place for you if you are interested. Doesn't necessarily have to be, be, be quite as dangerous as today was, but all of you, and she looks to you and sort of nods very clearly like, she will not be offended if you do not take this offer, could use level-headed, capable individuals like yourselves in these trying, ing, ing, and she looks up to the landed ships and the hack block ships, times. Forgive me, it is time to run into the mic. It is foundation day. And we should sell it, sell it, celebrate. Come. Uh, and she will lead you all to sort of all of the VIP sections of the festival for the rest of uh, the day. Of course, uh, she sort of continues to watch you all as if to judge your skills and, and uh, determine your abilities so that Torch may hopefully make use of them one day. Uh, but we've got some time left because you all absolutely decimated that poor landed man much faster than I expected. So why don't we talk a little bit about how you all celebrate the rest of Foundation Day. Uh, take a little bit of license and tell me what some of the celebrations that you all participate in look like here on the island. The first thing that Rafia, I'll start, the first thing that Rafia takes you to uh, is a, a presentation in the center of uh, the area, right next to the fountain. Uh, at the center of the island, and it's a, it's very Rafia. It's a display of new weaponry that has been developed uh, to try and combat the Hapalox. And she brings you over, and she immediately gets self-conscious about the purpose of these weapons based on the fact that you all just actively didn't kill a Hapalox. Uh, and she said, "Well, um, it will be an Im Im impressive display, nonetheless." Uh, and sort of uh, put, gives you all front row seats for that demonstration. What else do you all do uh, during your foundation day? Invicta, what, what, do you, what food do you find that you absolutely must share with the crew later? Ooh, I find steaks, but they're made of artificially bred animals. No, we're not hunting the native creatures of Utoa um, because, you know, she is very proud of this invention mm. of tasty meat <laughs> that does not have to come at the expense of animal life. Uh -huh. um, and also, her, she eventually finds her salansi and they make a lovely mint uh, cheesecake for them. Ooh. And of course, uh, because it's me, she has found an herbal treat infused whiskey 
that is only found it's just in all Holland. Of the things. I love it. Uh, look, it was a hard day. She was minding her business. <laughs> she's now, well, now she's gotten cleaned up, hopefully. Yeah, sure. You, yeah, Riffia could sort of take you inside and, and give you all a chance to do that. Yeah. So she, she shares the, the tasty food. Now it's my turn at the mic. Uh, the tasty foods of Helen's. <laughs> and just for fun, for some reason, her parents are there. Oh, yeah, well, no, they were there the whole time. Oh, no. And they, uh, they actually, oh, no. they showed up with Major Rafia oh. and just sort of sat back and let her talk her thing. And then oh, she, no. they came over and said hello to you with sort of sly smiles. My mom is going to sass me later, isn't she? Listen, you recently found out that your parents have experience with, like, black ops, so there's no telling what they're going to say to you later. Well, I mean, more for sassing my commanding officer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who else has got the next Foundation Day activity? Come on. <laughs> In the food theme. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, Mirren has been going around visiting different food stalls and what have you, and trying things, and also feeding things to Prussia, the Volca. Absolutely. And has found... <laughs> yeah, he's running out of rocks, I gotta say. He's gonna have to eat some of them rocks again. They've been picking up, like, little bits of, <laughs> along yes. the way. Like, just, yep. just bits of, you know, the, the pathways are sort of disappearing in bite. <laughs> oh, um, no! <laughs> Rufia is like, oh, uh, we'll get ma 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 maintenance on that. It's fine. <laughs> but has found that they both happen to love gush puppies. Oh, tell us about gush puppies, Mirren. <laughs> These are a season two special, I yes. think. Yeah. Do you, how much do you remember about them? Uh, cheese. Uh huh. And hush puppies, but cheese. Uh huh. More cheese. Uh huh. And Akimba loved them. And Akimba, yeah, they're sort of, uh, they're like fried hush puppy shells uh, with cheese and so much cheese inside that it's a bit like a gusher when you bite into it. I feel like this was a test. <laughs> <laughs> you passed. What do you remember? Uh, <laughs> and it, while eating them, also passing them to like brush you to. Yeah. Oh, this will be fine. <laughs> yeah, I mean that cheese is hot, but yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> uh, Daji Essen. I yeah, I think <laughs> keeping in the food theme only slightly. Yeah, only slightly. Listen, um, and Mother Legends is all that. about food. If the last four seasons are anything to say <laughs> about it, well, it's really not. So. I think the next found, uh, the founders, the foundation found, found mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, it's okay. I lost it too. Um, um, the next uh, activity is a a a special retelling oh. of when uh, the Musellians first came. Yeah, cool. Um, and like like an interpretive dance. Not really. It's not even theatrical. It's more. Um, th there's a a, a, a a tribalness to it as they. Um, uh, use their bodies to almost make these tableaus of what is going on. And there's, you know, the drum corps now uh, taking up smaller drums and kind of just keeping um, uh, beat. And just, it's, it's a really cool moment. Yeah. However, oh. Daji's not there. Okay. Daji um, <laughs> Wait, what? has taken some, some small vegetables and cut them and put them on his eyes, and he's taking a nap. <laughs> Because um, he's we love all for this, just like in the middle of the. <laughs> and he's he's seen he's in a flower bed. The, he has seen this performance too much, and honestly, that's an understudy, and we love understudies. <laughs> However, <laughs> he, he doesn't need to see this right now. He'll, I tell that understudy. He'll, you know, so he's gonna nap while this happens, and then once it's done, is when he'll wake back up and join the group. Incredible! Love I love it. So, you know, Essen, what's our final activity for Foundation Day? Um, Essen has, um, after, after wandering around and absolutely tasting things, Essen has noticed that children keep coming up to, like oh, small children yeah. keep coming up to him and kind of pulling, oh, yeah. pulling on, on his cloak. And he and turns around at first, and they're just like staring like wide-eyed, and he starts doing this with his hands, and they, and they kind of shriek back. And then he's like, no, 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 no. That one was our friend. And if they kind of lean in for a hug, he will, again, form... Um, from those particles, he will form like a little medallion that kind of resembles the, like, let's say for this legally distinct uh -huh. torch symbol uh -huh. and give each of them a little pendant if, if they can remember that sometimes when you encounter something strange, you should treat it with kindness first and then kick its ass if it needs to. <laughs> yeah, that's what it says on the flip side. Yeah, that's the, the other, other side of the pendant. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It isn't long before you see like knockoff uh, uh, Essen medallions being like passed around and they're now like the souvenir of this year's Foundation Day. Um, and as Foundation, uh, as this uh, final day of Foundation Day comes to a close, 
Uh, you all are invited into Torch headquarters. The rest of your crew is there. Uh, they watched uh, as what, what they could. Uh, they weren't able to get out uh, to help you all, but uh, they, of course, give you a real hard time uh, for not killing the Hapalock, but uh, also compliment oh, you. I give them a hard time in return for dragging me out of my house. <laughs> but aren't you glad we did? No. That's fair. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the three of you uh, that joined in on today's adventure uh, are offered positions with Torch should you so decide to take them, which of course you don't have to decide right now. Uh, but that is the thing that is offered to you. And uh, that's it for our Foundation Day one shot of Into the Motherlands. <laughs> Thank you all, especially for going with me at the end. One of the things I love about, uh, anyway, about the way that the show has been going and the way that at least you and I sort of feel about the system and the way that we tell stories in this world is that there is lots and lots of space, right, for things about, uh, for exploring, right? And exploring for us means so many different things. It definitely means going to different planets and moons and seeing new creatures and things. It means finding new places and new things on Vatoa itself. But it also, for us, uh, as we were sort of planning the seasons and, and working on the book, it also means exploring uh, interpersonal relationships. It means feeling like the players also have some ownership over over this setting, so creating foods, creating events for the festival, exploring what that means as you're playing out these scenes. Um, and so thank you, because I did not warn any of you that I was going to do that, but I appreciate it. Uh, and it's fun, and now we know a little bit more about what Foundation Day might look like in the motherland, so thank you. Let's go uh, around and let everybody know uh, who you are, remind them who you played, uh, where they can find you this weekend, if you've got more panels or games, um, and then of course how they can find and support you on the internet. Uh, should we start with you, Omega? Of course. Uh, hello again. Uh, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Uh, he, they pronouns. I am a professional actor and vocalist from the Midwest. Um, also a tabletop designer. Uh, I actually am very happy today because I designed the Baton to Ray uh, culture uh, and, and the griot profession. So that was really cool to get to see yeah. that out in, in, in about. Um, as far as the rest of PAX goes, tomorrow at 7.30, uh, I have a panel uh, that I am uh, moderating on what it means to be a bard, because a lot of people don't understand what the class really is and why it exists. Uh, so that's going to be a really good time. That's going to be in Leviathan. Uh, uh, aside from that, I do way too much. Just look at all my socials at Critical Bard and not on Tumblr. Um, and, and not on Mastodon. <laughs> uh, very specific. Very yeah. specific. Yes. Uh, that, that's me. Great. Hi, uh, I'm Brian Gray, AKA Urban Bohemian, pretty much everywhere on the internet except for TikTok, and I've already gone over why I'm mad about that. Um, <laughs> let's see, I'm really happy to be here with these folks, and this is the first time I'm playing Motherlands, and it's really, it's really nice. Even if I still have to do the, do I invoice you for doing the intro again tonight? <laughs> yeah. um, you can see me uh, tomorrow in Leviathan at 4.30. We're gonna do how to take people's money and give it to charity. And then on Sunday, you can catch me, um, in the main and they're in the main theater um, with these awesome folks doing rivals um, at 1 p.m. Otherwise, catch me around and say hi. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Cipher. Also, uh, Tanya on occasion. Um, at PAX tomorrow, for those of you that are a bit more advanced freelancers, I'll be doing Freelance 301 with Brian Cortijo in the moderator seat. Um, I think Lauren Urban is somewhere in the audience. Lauren's on this panel. Uh, that is Leviathan, so basically you have to go to Narnia and take a left and go to Avernus. Uh -huh. because legally distinct Narnia and legally distinct Avernus. Eh. <laughs> you know, you get the reference for a bunch of nerds at a tabletop convention. <laughs> and then uh, 1 p.m. next door in main stage, I'll be DMing first time on the main stage at PAX. Yeah. Uh, season 14 of Rivals with Eugenio, Brian, Masood, who I think is somewhere around here and uh, Latia and Sharif. And we'll be having a regular episode at our regular time from yeah. PAX. And then I'm going to go sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and hello, I'm Mandy. I've played Mirren, our Patantu PAX master. And you can find me around the internet as LadyLuck34. Uh, I'm usually lurking and causing chaos <laughs> for these individuals. Uh, but I also do stream as a content creator as well, doing variety content uh, from video games to crafting like sewing and crochet. And I have nothing else planned here except for to cause chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I think I'm winning so far. 
Oh, hey. really? Uh, and I am Eugenio Vargas. Uh, you can find me on the internet at DM Jazzy Hens. Uh, I, as Tanya and Brian have said, I'll be at Rivals uh, on Sunday at 1 over next door in the main theater. Other than that, I'll just be wandering around the con. Please feel free to say hi, stop me, and say hello. Um, we have two more episodes of this season of Into the Motherlands. If you enjoyed what you saw today, um, there are 40 other backlog episodes you could go back to season one and watch from the beginning. Uh, it's sort of an, in uh, well, I mean, I, I think it's interesting uh, to watch from the beginning because we've been developing this this system and this lore and this setting all the way through since the beginning uh, and as pieces have fallen into place we've taken stuff from the streams we've uh, had an incredible team of developers uh, writing the book and writing the setting as we go so you can sort of watch the whole thing take shape from season one if you want to go back and check that out uh, i believe the vods are on your youtube or the motherland but yeah on so you can check out uh, cypher's youtube and find the playlists there we have two more episodes of this season uh, the crew has uh, invicta and her crew have been jaunting around through mysterious portals uh, and facing really awful creatures. And there's a mystery about where these creatures came from and why they're, you're finding them on Batoa. Uh, so come hang out with us. Our shows are on Wednesday evenings at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific, twitch.tv slash Cypher of Tear. Uh, and that's been us. Thank you all so much, y'all. Please be safe. Have a wonderful rest of your packs. Good night.